Right, hi lads and lasses, and welcome to Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. Today I've got a special little video, it's a little bit of a chuck and a chat. I know I've done a lot of live streams lately, and I haven't done many instructional videos. I think there's a bank of instructional videos out there that are really, really good, and they'll keep you going, hopefully, until I can get to the position where I could do more instructional videos as well. It usually is. The first section is going to be something that I'm absolutely, what they say in America, stoked about, Whereas, we, which means I'm dead, dead excited. I've actually managed to get hold of a set of darts that I had some years ago that I gave away at Stockport Disability Darts. I'm talking to a few people, moving around the room, just mingling like you do, and this little young lad said that he was very, very uh, impressed with my darts. I like a big old softy, I give them him. Um, I wouldn't say that I've regretted it, I haven't, not at all, because it's, thing, it's, it's great to be able to, that must have made his day, his month, but I don't know, maybe even his year or his darting career from now moving forward, uh, who knows. But uh, through Steve Lamore, who's known to from. somebody who was selling some of these darts, I'll reveal what they are shortly, and um, he, I, I got in touch with this chap, Absolutely fantastic to deal with. On Facebook he's on called Facebook. Alan Jones. So I'm sure if you find him, he's on a lot of the um, dart sales and swap sites. He's absolutely genuine, absolutely bang on. I ordered the darts off him. I, I told him I'd have them. Paid him instantly, and the darts were on the way to me within an hour or so. Absolute, what an absolute star! And he's also sent me some extra little bits as well, which is always nice, isn't it? Right. So let's go over into section one. And do that little bit of a review now, because I'm like, I'm stoked up, I'm like a little 12 year old kid. Right, so let's go and have a look at that right now. Wah! Right, so first of all, let's get a close up look at the unboxing. The reason I love shot darts so much is because, as I've said on a few occasions, they're like the Lamborghini of darts. You get the Ford of darts, you get the BMW of darts, the you get the light of the light. Slightly out there, but fantastically innovative, fantastically machined. So much imagination um, has gone into these, but with an engineering technology behind it because the darts are still very, very throwable. As Matt from Atomic Darts says, it's art we get to throw, and these are very, very artistic darts. These are very artistic, they're very, very beautiful. Um, they, they come with 100 micron flights, the 90% tungsten. These are a match weighted dart uh, produced by a top line manufacturer and that shows in the weight matching. The weight matching on these is down to plus or minus 0 0.05 of one gram. And one gram, everybody knows, ain't much weight at all. So these are fantastic darts. The packaging is beautiful on them. Again, really, really impressive. If you look at them closely, the actual packaging has actually got raised sections on it where the actual shot logo, the Viking, the drag car, the car has actually been pressed from the other side. And it's just these little attention to detail things that make something like a Lamborghini worth £100,000, whereas I think you afford. I don't know, a Ford Mondeo is probably £25,000, £30,000. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. Right, so what we're going to do now is, without further ado, is take the darts out of the box. Right, now these come in the, what in the traditional shot way, which is one made up dart in the centre with the flights and the rings in. As you can see, they, they are punched flights and flight rings which hold the flights into place really, really good on the old shots. They come in like a foam packaging, holds the darts nicely, they're displayed nicely in the case. Uh, probably not the most eco-friendly dart cases. I think some of the clamshell packagings that we have now are a little bit more um, environmentally friendly, a little bit less plastic in them. Because don't forget we all have our own dart cases now, it's very rare anybody ever takes a bar wallet to the pub with them, it's usually a proper dart case. Right, so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to get one of the barrels out. And to right, so as we can see here, the dart is quite a short dart at 46 millimetres. So it's 46 millimetres, 
from the from where the actual point enters the barrel to the back of the barrel where that little scallop is there where it drops down to match up with the stem as we can see here it's approximately 7.2 millimeters at the back end this is really okay now I know a lot of people like slimmer darts but with these you've got a really really good grouping opportunity with them because of the actual taper that runs down the front of the dart here as you can see it runs right down to the point and this is what I found with these darts is I found them fantastic for grouping the really great thing, the other really great thing with them is is the scallop here which I'm pointing at in the centre of the dart means that you can pick them out of your hand out of your serving hand accurately every time this just gives you a feeling as you take them out of the serving hand you can actually feel that little bit of a scallop in them and that means that you know where that dart is in your fingers exactly. Right, so now what we've done is we've come in really close. And the reason I want to do this is, this is the essence of shot darts for me, is look at the machining on them. They have technical names for them, but I, you know me, all I want to do is I just want to tell it as it is and the way that I find it. You've got to Right, so the thing that I wanted to point out about the shot darts, and this is why I think I rave about them all the time, about... The ingenuity, the imagination, the milling quality, the machining quality, the cutting quality, the lathe quality on them. Every part of the machining process in these is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you look at the dart, the actual shape itself, it gives you it gives you there a single ring at the back. So we're going to start at the back here. So we're going to start at the back here, and this is the single ring at the back. And then moving on. So another single ring into this what looks like a fancy pattern but this fancy pattern is very very important for the simple reason is, is this provides a really really good high level of grip and the reason for that being is if you look at the way that this is machined you can see it's got flats on it and it's not only got flats it's got drills into it so the, so it's got like like holes shallow holes drilled into it and not only that, those shallow holes have then been cross cut. So if you can, if you look at the edges of them, the actual circles are like half moons. They're not just like a flat round piece that's been cut into it. They're like half moons. And that gives you the edges of those half moons. So the, what we would call the crescents of them at the edges here and here give a, a higher level of grip because there's more surface area to skin contact. We move along that to the other end and then we've got two more ring grips which I think is more um, aesthetic than practical. Those two little ring grips I don't think could make much difference. Another massive part of this dart is that little piece there which is a little bit of a scallop. That means that when you take these darts out of your serving hand they come into your hand in exactly the same place every time once you've got used to the actual mechanical transfer from your serving hand to your throwing hand. The front of the barrel again provides good grip, really good grip down here and as you can see they're like little triangles that are cut into the barrel and then those little triangles have got a further cut into them which starts off big here and goes smaller and smaller and smaller down to two tiny little ring grips at the end. Section. Right so now what we've done is we've moved on to the point section so as you can see what I was just mentioning the grip that comes down and down and down along the barrel and then you've got the point and it's a fantastic point system this because you can see the patterning if you look closely you'll be able to see that patterning in the actual point itself now that patterning gives you a massive amount of grip in the board when it goes into the board however it doesn't drag the sisal out with it so again another fantastic innovative idea that means that you get ultimate grip in the dartboard on the sisal without actually damaging it and this is what I'm talking about, about the, the, the in-depth le levels of which these darts, they're just out of this world, they really, really are. Right, so the dart out of the box comes with a medium length stem. As you can see, the actual flights themselves are slotted and there's a ring. So the slots and rings on the flight itself. As you can see here, we've got some... On the flight, there is some Viking symbols on there. Flights and, and stems are a personal choice. I will more than likely be going with these to the click system which is what I used to use on them 
and I just found found it a lot more balanced. I think these um, this flight this stem length is slightly too long for this dart. Right, so that is the shot drag cars in close up. That's my little bit of a review on them. Hope you've enjoyed that. So now what we're going to do is go over into the next section of the video. So let's go over there right now. Right, so I hope you enjoyed section one. I thought that was fantastic. Me, I'm like I say, I'm over the moon. These shot drag cars. I've not, um, like I say, I've not had them for so long. That was a little review. And what we're going to do at the end of this video is going to be the first chuck of them. So it'll be the first chuck I've had with a set of shot drag cars in, oh, it must be two years, if not more. If you look back on the channel, it's got to be two years or more. So I'm over the moon, I'm stoked, I'm pumped, and I really, really want to chuck them down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over into section two, and we're going to do a proper little bit of a section on breathing. How to breathe when you throw in your darts, how to breathe between, and just give this a go and see what a difference it makes. Right, so let's go over and have a look at that right now. Right, so here we are over in section two, and what we're going to talk about in section two is breathing. So very very important part of your game this especially when you get into a good standard when you like just throwing for fun when you're probably just about getting into the pub scene it doesn't make a massive difference it does make a massive difference to your accuracy but this is where it comes in is when you come into competitive play for the simple reason is, is breathing is the easiest and the most effective way of, way of controlling your emotions as well as anxiety and, of course, your actual breathing, the way that your long lungs operate, affect the accuracy of your dart throwing. And I'll explain to you why right now. Right, so what we'll do is we'll start off with what I call the basics of breathing. And obviously we all have to breathe in and breathe out, otherwise we'll keel over and die. So we've all got to breathe, but if you practice... Um, Getting your breathing right when you're actually throwing your darts, it will make a huge difference to the way that you play. If you get used to using your breathing to breathe yourself down, it will get rid of your anxieties. It will reduce them massively. There's no substitute for finger for experience and actually being there. No matter how good you are at breathing yourself down, the first couple of times you're going to be pretty overwhelmed. You'll just do as good as you can, but this will start to, to actually click and start to work for you as you start to build yourself up through the top of the pub game and hopefully into um, Super League, the League Super League and then into County and onto being a professional. Breathing very, very important. We see right, so the first point to talk about when breathing is actually understanding what actually happens as you breathe. Everybody should know this. As you breathe in, your chest expands. Obviously, as your lungs fill with air, your, that's why you have gaps between your ribs. So as you breathe in, your chest expands. Fantastic little experiment for you to do here, and you'll absolutely love this one. Get on the hockey, let's get ourselves a set of uh, arrows. Doesn't really matter which ones they are, does it? Let's just see if we can find a set that are lying about. Right, excellent, so we've got a set here. If you fantastic little experiment, just try standing with your dart where you throw it. Even if you throw it from in front of your eye, fetch your dart back in front of your face, right, and then breathe in. Look at the look of that. Can you actually see now where it affects your accuracy? So if you go to draw back and then you breathe in as you deliver the dart, your actual whole body is expanding as your arm's going forward. And then the dart goes up towards the top of the board. And you can't think why. You think to yourself, I'm doing it absolutely right. And then sometimes what I'm doing is the darts are going into the 60, and then the next dart that I throw is going up towards the double top. And there's one of your reasons. is because, as you think, as you draw the dart back, if you, and a lot, I hear a lot of people doing this when I'm playing against them and when I'm coaching them, as the dart comes back, they breathe in like this and, and then throw it, obviously. Not as loud and as pre predominantly as I did that, but that's what they're doing. They're expanding the lungs as they're throwing them. And don't forget, this can be part of something that you can have a coaching video on or you can have a live one-to-one -one coaching with me. Don't forget, we can talk about stuff. We don't have to throw darts. If you've got stuff that you're worried about or stuff that you need to talk about, then I'm here and quite happy to help you do that. No problem. Don't forget, I do coach the mental side of the game as well as the physical side. And also, all the practical skeletal mechanics, breathing, uh, muscular 
I, I think I coach every every aspect of throwing darts. So if you need me, you know exactly where I am and exactly how to get hold of me. It's DJ Llewellyn one two three outlook.com. Right. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to show you exactly the way that I do it. Logic dictates. So what we do is we're like a sniper. So what I like to do is as I stand on the hockey, you'll see me. As I take the dart out of my hand, I'm breathing in. As it gets to here, the breath's coming out. When it gets to here, the breath has gone. When the breath has gone and I'm still, that is when I deliver the, the dart to the board. So it's all air out of my lungs, all anxiety out of my body. And like I say, this will come on to the next bit and you'll understand why then. What you're doing is you're lifting, you're lifting your energy in and you're pushing the energy away. You're pushing all that anxiety and all that energy away before you let go of your darts. That was something that Richard mentioned in the video that he did about his little bit of a diary is he felt more comfortable and more relaxed. This is what it's all about and this takes you to the next level of comfort. This takes you to the next level of being relaxed as you're throwing your darts. So it's like this. So everything's out of your lungs by the time that you actually deliver the dart to the board. Now there's a couple of different techniques you can use here and I use two of them. One of them is throw, like so, breathe, throw, depending on how slow I'm going. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll breathe, I'll breathe right out and I'll deliver two darts. And then I'll have a short, shallow breath between dart number two and dart number three. But always, as long as you make sure that all that air is out of your lungs when you throw the dart. Alright, so that is a little bit of a look into breathing while you're actually throwing. The next stage of it is, is breathing between throws, so when you stood at the back of the hockey and breathing between legs and sets. Now, yeah. the, the way that we do this, or the way that I do this, it was taught to me by a martial artist when I was a young lad and this, this guy was an old monk and so he knew what he was talking about. Right, everything. the way to do this is starting off nowhere near the dartboard, nowhere near doing anything to do with darts. What you want to do is you want to sit in a nice quiet room on your own. Yeah, shut your eyes Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And not a sharp breath in and a sharp blow out. A nice, steady, circular motion. Yeah? So it's in. Stop a split second. In. In. And you'll feel, when you get to that, you'll feel like you're going over a peak. It's like, how can I explain this? Really good way. Well, how your legs feel when they go over the top on your pedals, on your bike, when you're going slow. You get to a peak and then you start coming down the other side and your breathing's exactly the same. It's... That sort of thing. So you're breathing in and breathing out. When you exhale, so when you breathe out, just feel your body dropping. You can feel the energy inside you. You can feel like you're floating down. I suppose some people feel like they're floating down. That's the way I feel. Is is what I feel. I, I explain it as I feel like I'm coming down the stairs. You can picture it in loads of different ways. Really, really good one to do is what I I like to do, and I tend to do this if I'm in a competitive match. Before I actually go to the match, what in between? Sometimes in between sets, but. Very rarely, but if you actually go off and come back on, or between matches, fantastic on this. Sit out of the way, get your eyes shut, and believe me, within 10 or 15 seconds you won't even be able to hear the room around you. Once you get used to doing this, and you get thinking, you get into the swing of it, once you breathe yourself down you won't be able to hear what's going on around you. And it's an, an ultimate way of affecting yourself into, I suppose you could, it, you could call it peace, tranquility, and it just calms you down for your next game. And if you can maintain that during the game, you'll find that your nerves won't get the better of you. Right, so what we do, again, is imagine, this is how I do it, you can do it wherever you want. They call it your happy place, right? So it's whatever you like. It could be swimming in the sea, it could be flying in your own little plane, anything like that. But all you need to do is you need to have a destination to get to. Where, and what mine is, is I'm stood on a, on a cliff top. And there's a set of stairs that go all the way down to the beach at the bottom. At the beach, in the beach, on the beach, get my teeth in for me, Graham. On the beach at the bottom, there's a sun lounger with a parasol and my favourite drink on the table. 
the waves are crashing on the short shore and it's just where I want to be, I want to be lay on that sun lounger with that beer in my hand and just relax, just with my eyes closed, just listening to the waves lapping up on the beach and just like allowing yourself just to go to that place. So what I do is I start off, I'm at the top on the stood on the cliff and as each time I breathe out I feel like I'm going down a step. So every time I breathe it's in, on that step, down to the next step, in on that step, down to the next step and it's pushing it further and further down and you'll feel the energy going further and further down into your body and into your legs. And then what you'll do is you'll get into a place there where you breathe, your breathing, breathing will go into a, a lovely rhythmical circular motion. Not excessively silly long deep breaths, but enough to fill your lungs and enough to empty your lungs. Fill your lungs, empty your lungs. Right, right, so you've got, got the building blocks of the Dynamite Dave way of throwing, which the early stages are obviously the mechanical stages, and then like the more technical bits of the breathing and other little aspects of it which we'll go through with serving and attitude to practice a lot of the mental side of the game is well the thing with the, the mental side and I've said this loads and loads of times I haven't made a video on it for a while and I probably will do uh, shortly the mental side of the game is 80% of it the actual physical side of the game is the easy bit the hard bit is the mental side and this breathing is part of your mental side also it affects the physical with the with the with the, the actual chest expansion, but it also plays a massive part on the mental side of the game. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little section. So let's go over now back into the main body of the video. So let's go there right now. Right, so that was a little bit about breathing. What did you think of that? Like I say, it's all part of a structured way of throwing darts. If you breathe in as you're throwing the dart out. You're expanding your lungs. If you stand there and just hold your dart in front of your face where you would normally hold it, even if you hold it underneath your eye, and stand there and take a couple of two or three deep breaths in and just what what will just look at what happens to your dart as you're doing it. Now if you think about it, as you're pulling it in and you go to throw it out, if you take that intake of breath as you're going out, then you, you fall again, you're forcing the dart up in the air. As your lungs are expanding. Your brain has got to try and compensate for that to get the dart to go where you want it to. Just right, so the first person I'd like to thank this month, and he's had massive contribution into the channel this month. He's been there on the bomb squad, all the other places. He's, he's, thinking, he's, he's rationalised for people without me having to say it, because obviously it seems like it's me all, all, always that he's saying this is how it is, that how it is, but it's really, really good and I'm really, really grateful to him. To, and he's one of the first ones that's actually done like a video reply to having a coaching video. And what I would encourage you to do, I'd, what I'd encourage everybody to do who wants to, do the same sort of thing. If you want to say thank, thank you to me, if you want to tell everybody the difference that Dynamite Dave has made to you, all you've got to do is just do it on your phone. Just prop it up on the thing on the side there. Just talk to it like you're talking to me. Send it to me. I will edit it. So you don't look daft or anything like that. I'll take all the bits out of it, all the mistakes and everything. Don't worry about that. If, all you've got to do is just talk to that camera as if you were talking to me. Right? And what I'll do is, everybody who does that, that I actually feature, I'll send you some little gifts. Yeah? So I think that's hopefully that's a little bit of an encouragement to do that as well. And um, yeah, the first shout out is obviously to Richard Evans. Now Richard the Tank Evans... I, I did a coaching video for him and I knew that he was a good player to start off with. I could tell that because the video that he sent me had views of the board and what have you and I could see that he was really quite good and quite accurate. And I thought to myself, right, if we eliminate all those bits out of his throw, how accurate will he be in the future? But I never imagined how um, well he would understand what I was doing and how, how um, up for it he'd be brilliant members of the community and what have you but it's just one step beyond what Richie's done and it, and, it, and it's alright coming from me all the time but it's fantastic for it to be coming from someone else also I want to thank is Steve Lamore because he's thinking he's put me onto the Dracars absolute star I'm always here like Richie said if you have a thing if you have a coaching video off me if you have a, a coaching session with me I'm always available to you 
I might not get back to you within seconds, I might do, it all depends on how busy I am and don't forget I have to work as well but anybody who's had a coaching video off me, any backup um, information, any support, any encouragement that they want it comes without anything, any question or any further cost to you so having one of those coaching videos personally and I think a lot of other people will say the same thing probably on the bomb squad and possibly on YouTube the people who've had personal coaching videos will tell you that invaluable and the, the information that they give you is, is really really good for the price that they cost compared to as Richie said if you go to a professional you're going to be paying three times what I charge minimum and the difference is, is they might make you laugh but they'll change very little when I give you a program to follow, if you follow that program and it's been proved not once, twice, not a hundred but over a thousand times it pr it's been proven that it works, it works and it makes dark players no matter what level you're at now it may, you may take a dip in it of course because as we say time and time and time and time again it's a journey and you've got to get worse before you get better if you change something there is always a dip in performance before it comes back and takes off right so those are the shout outs for thingy for today's video um, not forgetting not forgetting Alan Jones who, who sorted me out of the drag cars absolutely over the moon very very much in debt to him um, like I say moving forward what I'm going to do is I will contact him again if I want any other specific darts or if I, what I'll do is I'll keep an eye on his channel and obviously people who help me and people who are good to me I'm always good to them right so what we'll do now is we'll go over into that third and final section where I actually get to chuck them drag cars and boy am I excited about this right so let's get on with it let's get over there right now right so now what we've done is we've made our way up into the uh, studio it's had a little bit of a revamp we've got a special little piece of equipment that I'm hope hopefully going to be able to put all my um, broadcasting stuff on my um, streaming stuff on so I'll be able to wheel it in and out so it won't interfere with the coaching and other stuff mount the cameras on it and everything just put it into position and broadcast straight from that fingers crossed but we'll see whether that works out or not right so what we've done is we've come upstairs into the studio and we've got the shop viking drakars which I'm like I said really really excited about get these out of the packet so we've shown you these downstairs we've done a little bit of a review with, with them and now right, we've got the shop drakars out now and what we're going to do is swap them for the original flights and stems so we don't do any damage to them because I shall be keeping these for years I shall, I shall be giving these ones away I shall be keeping them right so let's have a look and see what we can put on these right so what we're going to do now is I've built the drag cars up I'm going to have the first throw with them I've got the camera set up and everything now so here we go. One hundred of the first three arrows. It's really strange. They they don't feel anything like the darts that I've been throwing recently, as you probably expect because of the shape of them and what have you. But they just feel very familiar, if you, if you know what I mean. Very comfortable. Um, very impressed. Like I say, I think I'd like a little bit of a shorter shaft on them. And probably the click system would probably be the best system because that's what I used to throw with them and uh, yeah I'm happy
Right, so what we'll do to finish off is we're just going to have a little bit, quick game of 301 and we'll close that off and we'll see over the next couple of weeks and what have you how we get on with these. I really like throwing them but obviously because I've not thrown them for so long they're not going exactly where I want them to. I think there's a, a slight difference in arm speed that I require as much. Absolutely fantastic video, really enjoyed doing this, nice little game of 301 at the end there. Um, right, brilliant stuff, so thanks for watching Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. Don't forget you only ever get out of this game what you're prepared to put in. And always, 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 total the hockey.